Time now for the day in sport with Darren Murrah. Darren, Pakistan seem to be in total control of the second test. They are, Dennis. Sorry to say, Australia will need to produce another heroic batting display to avoid defeat in the United Arab Emirates. Australia collapsed to be all out for 145 in their first innings. At lunch of day three, Pakistan leads by 369 runs. Meeting quick wickets early on day three, Australia was willing to take them however they came. Azar Ali thought he had hit the ball to the rope, but that wasn't the case. Oh, they're thinking that it's... Yeah! Oh, that's out. The ball did not hit the fence. And they were in a huddle. It's just crazy. <laughs> Incredible. Pakistan pushed its lead past 300, but the tourists refused to believe their fate is sealed. It was disappointing a couple of days, but the camp the camp's still positive. We, we managed to hold on and, and scrap for a, a brilliant draw in the first test, so um, we, we see still two results um, on the board. Another first innings batting collapse. Manus Labashain dismissed after failing to ground his bat at the non-striker's end. It was his mind. It was wondering. He wasn't really up for it. It was disappointing, but that happens in cricket. It's not ideal, but that happens. Australia's total of 145 was a record low for the team in the United Arab Emirates. Mitchell Stark dismissed Mohammed Hafiz, but concerns remain over his hamstring for the remainder of the match. Nathan Lyon also put his body on the line. Wonderful catch. He hit it hard. He's so good off his own bowling. It's his second court bowl in this test match. John Holland was left frustrated after Azar Ali was given not out on review because he was struck more than three metres from the stumps. Pitching in line, hitting in line, hitting the stumps. To, to me, that, that was that's, uh, that's strange. Adrian Archuli, SBS World News. Meantime, Australia's women's team has made a positive start in its one-day international series. Pakistan won the toss and elected to bat. Nicola Carey and Megan Shute each took three wickets. Australia was chasing a rain-affected target of 92 for victory and reached the total with five wickets in hand. To football and Melbourne Victory's marquee signing, Keizer K Honda says he doesn't know much about his first A-League opponents. The Japanese great will make his debut for the defending champions in Saturday's local derby against Melbourne City. And Honda admits he hasn't followed the league closely in recent years. I know team team used to play Melbourne City, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but tactically, we are analyzing, and Kevin have told us a lot of things what they would do. The season kicks off tomorrow night with Adelaide playing host to Sydney FC. Wallabies coach Michael Checker has denied there's a growing pressure on the team heading into the third Bledisloe Cup test against New Zealand next weekend. Australia avoided finishing last in the rugby championship with a comeback win against Argentina earlier this month. And Checker's side heads to Japan looking to avoid a series whitewash against the All Blacks. I know everyone likes to think it's all been disastrous, but it actually hasn't been. There's, there's plenty of good bits in there as well. We need to harness and use all of those and bring them forward um, into the tour, build on them, so that we can get more consistent results. Following that match, the Wallabies will then head to Europe for three test matches against Wales, Italy and England. Nepal and Australia has won the Constellation Cup against New Zealand for the sixth straight year. The Diamonds took a five-point lead into quarter time, in game four and extended that lead into half time. Caitlin Bassett with a run of goals for Australia to help complete a 3 1 series win over the Silver Ferns. The tennis and Daria Gavrilova's Moscow Cup campaign has come to an end at the hands of Britain's Joanna Conta in the round of 16. The former 2016 finalist at the event went down in three sets. Conta booking a place in the quarterfinals against Alexandra Sasnovich. Australia's leading female sporting stars were recognised last night at the 8th Annual Women in Sport Awards. World champion swimmer Kate Campbell took out the top prize, named Sportswoman of the Year. I stand here not through my own power, but through the belief of other people in me. And if I can give one message to everyone out there today is that there's brighter times on the horizon and look to people for support. Campbell won gold medals at both the Commonwealth Games and the Pampax earlier this year. 
And finally, in sport, she's one of the biggest names in world football. Matilda star Sam Kerr will headline the upcoming W League when she takes the field for Perth Glory. And in tonight's special feature, we go one-on-one -on -one with the competition's first ever marquee player. Sam Kerr is one of the best female footballers in the world and she's ready to prove it in season 11 of the W League. I hope I can keep scoring more goals and keep impacting, um, you know, the W League. The FFA's marquee fund had previously been used for A-League players only. Kerr hopes her historic marquee deal will be the first of many for the women's game. To be the first one ever, it's a huge honour and something I don't take lightly and hopefully it's a step in the right direction so one day, you know, there can be a marquee player for every single team. Kerr's grandmother is of Indian descent. Many in her family believed she'd end up playing cricket or AFL. Well, when I was a kid, I always had AFL. Um, I loved Ashley Sampy, um, but he was just, you know, an AFL idol. But football was her destiny. She was recently shortlisted for the inaugural Women's Ballon d'Or Award. Yeah, it's a huge honour um, to be nominated next to those girls who a, lo a lot of them I play against or play with or even look up to. So it's a huge honour and, yeah, I'm still pinching myself. Kerr was controversially snubbed for FIFA's World Player of the Year award last year, despite being named the Asian Player of the Year. She was also the top scorer in US football's NWSL in 2017. It's obviously nice to feel the public support any time they're on your side. It's nice, but look, just motivates me to want to be better. With the Matildas headed for a seventh straight World Cup next year, the W League's marquee woman has plenty of motivation. This will be my third, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think we have a really great chance and we have a great team, so I'm really excited. Daniela Rintilli, SBS World News. And a reminder, you can catch the upcoming W League season on SBS Viceland. Our coverage of 15 matches and the final series begins on Sunday, October 28. All games are live, free and in HD. There's also streaming via the World Game website and the app. Janice, expect plenty of goals from Sam Kerr this season. Oh, she is such a star. Love her. Thanks, Darren. Coming up, the weather details and bye bye birdie. The end of an era for one of the world's most beloved children's characters.